Fabrizio Romano has just dropped some breaking news on Mohamed Kudus' potential move to Arsenal. Yes, people, wife boy, welcome back to another Arsenal Trans News video. As always, if you want to be kept up to date with daily Arsenal Trans News vids, this is the place to be. You have to subscribe down below on my road to 5,000 subscribers and hit the bell notification button so you never miss a future video on this channel. And please let me know your thoughts in the comment section regarding Mohamed Kudus' potential move to Arsenal. Let's get straight into the tweet brought today by AFC Sphere and it states this and this is direct from Fabrizio Mano on his Here We Go podcast on Tumblr. Some reports suggesting that Arsenal have opened talks for Kudus. At the moment I'm not aware of any concrete negotiations with Kudus and Arsenal. I will let you know. I am told that the last call between Kudus and Arsenal side was at the end of July a couple weeks ago. Let's see if they will reactivate the option. Let's see if they want to bid. Personal opinion Kudus will be perfect for Arsenal and Chelsea and this is really important news right because Whenever Fritz Romano says something, that means it's got some kind of truth to it. There's a lot of all these journalists out there that spit a lot of news regarding Arsenal, Chelsea, all the clubs in world football. Let's be real, they don't really know much. The real ones that know something are the Fabrizio Romanos, the David Ornsteins. Those are the real two tier one sources. Those are the real sources where I take real information from. Every single transfer so far, when I've said it's going to happen, it's happened. As an Arsenal going to sign Declan Rice, it happened. As an Arsenal going to sign Kai Havertz, it happened. Same with Timber, same with Raya. Every single time I remain confident in every single video I dropped on those players saying Arsenal will sign those players. Why? Because a Ornstein and Fabrizio Romano both tweeted about them. So the fact that Fabrizio Romano is now talking about Kudus is a good sign. Now obviously he said that Arsenal haven't bid so far and, and it's not obviously concrete negotiation. So you're sitting there thinking, that's not good news. Arsenal haven't moved at all for Kudus. Yes, I hear you, but the interest is there. And that's been confirmed by Fabrizio Romano. He's confirmed that Arsenal have spoken to Kudus in the past. He's confirmed that Arsenal can reactivate the option. Also, can go in for a bid. The pathway has been laid out by Fabrizio Romano. There is a way for it to happen. Not once has Fabrizio Romano said, for example, Arsenal could go for Kylian Mbappe. He doesn't say stuff like that because it's not going to happen, even though some re reports out there that Kylian Mbappe could come to Arsenal potentially. When Fabrizio Romano says something, more often than not, it's got some sense, it's got some truth and logical uh, uh, kind of path behind it. So genuinely, guys, I think Kudus to Arsenal is a possibility. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say it's going to happen, as I'm definitely not as confident as I was with Arsenal signing David Raya, who got announced today, by the way. So congratulations to him, David Raya, new signing for Arsenal. Fantastic signing, by the way. I think it's going to be great competition for Aaron Ramsdale. So I'm not as confident as when I was when Arsenal was signing Havertz, Timber, Rice or David Raya. But I do think Kudus is an opportunity. Now, here's the thing about the Kudus deal. West Ham are now also interested. We've heard from Fabrizio Romano that West Ham have got a concrete interest in Mohamed Kudus. And apparently Kudus is open to the move. Now here's the thing, right? Brighton have got an offer on the table. If Kudus doesn't want to go to Brighton, why would you want to go to West Ham? West Ham are worse than Brighton. So Chelsea is another one. But the thing, of, thing is with Chelsea, right, is they've gone in for Caicedo, they've gone in for Lavia, and now they've activated the release clause on Michael Elise. That's nearly 200 million spent in about three days. So, for Chelsea's behalf, can they now go for Kudus as well? They can. I mean, we've seen it before with Todd Bowley. I thought when they signed Caicedo, they would have not bothered with Lavia anymore. But they've gone for both. So, it can happen. Obviously, expect the unexpected with Chelsea Football Club. But you've got to think that they're not going to go for Elise and Kudus. Surely not. Especially after signing Lavia and Caicedo. So, I'm going to do the naive thing, but I'm going to rule Chelsea out for now. So, now you're looking at it with Brighton, West Ham and Arsenal. Now, guys, I want you to close your eyes for a second, right? If I, if I, if you're a footballer, you're 22 years old, Ghanaian, or you don't have to be Ghanaian, but you're, you're, you're in Kudus's position. You've got three clubs offering for you, West Ham, Brighton, Arsenal. Which contract are you taking? If you don't say Arsenal, you're being a bit of an idiot. You have to take the Arsenal option. We're the best club out there for Kudus. We genuinely are. Even for British Romano himself, in this quote tweet, he says, in personal opinion, Kudus would be perfect for Arsenal and Chelsea. He doesn't say Kudus would be perfect for Brighton. He doesn't say Kudus would be perfect for West Ham. Fabrizio Romano is perfectly aware that West Ham and Brighton want Kudus, but he name-dropped Arsenal. He said Kudus will be perfect for Arsenal. So here's the thing, guys. How do Arsenal get Kudus? Because that's the million-dollar question. I'm sure that's what all you guys are asking in the comment section. How do Arsenal get Kudus? Will Arsenal get Kudus? Very simple. The club want to sign him, but we haven't put the money down. Why? We need to sell. Sell, 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 sell. Balogun potentially is garnering interest from Monaco for 50 million. If we can get 50 million euros for Balogun, that's exactly the amount of money you need to sign Kudus. The positive thing is, Brighton got their bid accepted. That means we know the asking price. Ajax are not going to accept less than 40 million now because that's what they accepted from Brighton. They ain't going to do that. Brighton offered 40 million, you've got to match that. And if Arsenal match the 40 million from Brighton, the player will come to Arsenal. He's choosing Arsenal over Brighton and West Ham any day of the week. I'm 100% confident in that. I'll bet all my life savings on that happening. 
So it's all about Arsenal paying the money. Now here's the thing with Kudus. There's two weeks left of the window. Kudus wants to move from away, away from Ajax, but he wants to move to Arsenal. So he's waiting. He's stalling. And I know that's the case because Ajax agreed terms with, with uh, Brighton almost two weeks ago now. Tell me any time in history where club has agreed terms with another club over the deal and it's been two weeks and we still haven't heard any developments. It's because the player doesn't want the move. If Kudus wanted the move, the deal would have been wrapped up by now. It would have got announced a week ago. Kudus clearly does not want the move. Otherwise, he would have been a Brighton player by now. So that gives me hope. Arsenal probably sat there, right? And they probably sat there and gone, you know what? We want to sign Kudus, but we want to sell first. They might have spoken to Kudus in July. Fabrizio Romano said that Arsenal spoke two weeks ago and said, look, we want to sign you. Because obviously, when they would have spoken to him, it would have been end of July. We would have already signed Rice. We would have already signed Timber, Havertz. We would have, we would have already spent basically all our money. So we probably would have told Kudus at that point, look, we want to sign you, but we haven't got the money right now. Hold on. Genuinely hold on, because we're trying to sell some players. We're trying to get rid of the Balogans. We're trying to get rid of the Tierneys, maybe. Partey could go, who knows? We're trying to sell these players, and then we'll make a move for you. If we don't, feel free to go to another club. But I'll give you my gentleman's word that we want to make a move for you, Mohamed Kudus. We just got to sell some players first. And if that has been a the dialogue, then Kudus has sat there and gone, cool, if that's the case, I'll hold my horses. There's still two weeks to go. No need to rush into a decision. Let me wait for big, big boy Arsenal to come through the door and try and sign me. So that could be the route to success here for Arsenal. Obviously, the route is there for Richard Romano's confirmed that if Arsenal do make a bid, they have got the option to sign Kudus. The contacts with Ajax is good. The rapport is good. The pathwork has been laid out. The groundwork's been done. The foundations have been set in. It's all about making the bid now to make it happen. So if Arsenal want the player, there's no excuses. That's my, my way of seeing it. Arsenal have got a viable option here in Mohamed Kudus. They've got a route to signing. Now, if Arsenal do not sign Kudus, it's purely because they do not want him. The deal isn't difficult. It's not. It's probably one of the most easiest deals you can pull off. It's not like the Declan Rice deal where you're negotiating back and forth, back and forth, and you don't know how high the price is going to go. We know to get Kudus is 40 million euros, which for my, in my eyes, I don't know about you guys in the comment section, please do let me know. But in my eyes, signing a 22-year-old, versatile, World Cup proven player in Mohamed Kudus who's eager to learn and can play a multitude of positions for only 40 million euros is an absolute steal in this day and age. Given that Moise Caicedo just got sold for 110 million, Lavia for 60 million. To get Kudus for only 40, he can play right wing, he can play box-to-box -box midfield. Two positions I think we dearly need this football club. I think it's an absolute no-brainer in my opinion. I think it's a deal you have to make happen. So if Arsenal do not sign Kudus this summer, it is 100% down to Arsenal not wanting him. That is the reason. Because the groundwork's there. It's one of the most easiest deals you can pull off. The money's available. Kudus wants to move. Ajax already shown that they're willing to sell the players. They've already accepted the bid from Brighton. The deal is open for Arsenal to happen. It's a straight route. There's no bends, there's no turns, it's a straight path. It's just whether Arsenal want to open that door, burst through and sign Kudus. As always, I'll be keeping you guys up to date with Mohamed Kudus news to Arsenal as soon as I hear it. I've been dropping a lot of Kudus news videos lately because that's all the news that's been coming out. I hope you guys are appreciating that. As always, if you want to be up to date with daily Arsenal trans news videos, which I'm guessing you do since you've stayed this far in the video, you have to subscribe down below on my road to 5,000 subscribers. Drop a like down below this video, gets out to more people in the algorithm. And if you're a hardcore Arsenal fan like myself, consider becoming a channel member. It's the first link in the description and you get exclusive access to Arsenal videos where I'll be previewing every single Arsenal game this season with the game against Crystal Palace coming up in just a few days time. I'll be I appreciate you guys all for tuning in and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Take care.